Paul Kay back again for the third hour. <laughs> now, I've got a um, gentleman here by the name of Max Egan. From Are you from Sydney, Max? I'm from Byron Bay, Santo. Pleasure to be on the show. Oh. Thanks for asking me on. Wow. Man. Well, thank you for coming on. That's fantastic because um, Max is going to share with us some, uh, some amazing remedies in trust law. So uh, without any further ado, I mean, and I did start off talking about trust law. Uh, I didn't sort of, <laughs> I didn't talk too much about it. I went straight into the, uh, the religion slash astrotheology. But anyway, um, uh, thanks, Max. And um, can I just uh, hand over to you and you can talk away, I guess. Uh, share with us this wonderful remedy um, with how we can... Uh, stand in competence when we go to court, please. Thank you. Okay, well, the thing is with trust law, I mean, there's an awful lot of disinformation out there about trust law. One of the most important things before you even start going down the path of trust law is to understand who and what you are. And mm -hmm. you first basically have to establish your, <clears throat> excuse me, your preeminent trust with the creator, whatever you perceive the creator to be. You've really got to be prepared to stand in that and to stand in that power and to know that you have unalienable rights that were granted to you by God, whatever you perceive God to be, and that nobody in creation has any more rights than you. We are all created equal. It's, it's really important that you approach all of this from a state of heart. It really is. <clears throat> it's, it's one of the big problems I'm finding with it is that, that people want to go in and attack the system and all of this sort of stuff. And it's not about that. It's it's about standing in your freedom. That's the basis of all trust law. But what's going on with the governments basically is is we're in a trust agreement with the governments and we don't really realise that we're in this agreement. Now, you, Santo, you've gone through on a video that I saw, you actually went through the history quite well, and it shows how these trusts were established way back by the Vatican, and how they basically claimed control of everything. And the problem is that we have never re-established ourselves or never established ourselves as the administrators of our own trust, of our own legal name. And a lot of people that are out there talking about this stuff, they teach people to fear their birth certificate, like this is a certificate of slavery or something. And yes. if you look at it in law and in maritime law, well, it, it, it kind of is. But when you step back and you put it back into trust law, it actually becomes a receipt and it becomes your way out. It becomes your ticket of freedom. You've just got to approach it in the right way. Now, people have been asking me um, to formulate a letter for them, to formulate some sort of a template for them that they can follow. And I'm going, I'm going to do that, but I've, I've got to do it in such a way that um, people still sort of do it by themselves because if it's all about competency trust law is all about competency it's about proving that you are capable of governing yourself and so if all you're capable of doing is grabbing a template and filling in the blanks then how competent are you and how um, irresponsible would it be for me to simply throw people in half cocked with a fill in the blanks form so they've got to understand this they've got to understand the power that they have but basically what's going on in the whole arrangement is that your birth certificate shows that you are the grantor and beneficiary of a private trust, a trust agreement that you have with the government. Now, you are the sole shareholder of that trust, that legal name, that all capitals legal fiction that was created on your birth, that appears on your birth certificate. You own all the equity in that name. So you are the sole shareholder. As the shareholder of that, what is essentially a corporation, you are able to appoint your own administrator for that corporation and you would obviously appoint yourself. And that only leaves one position left in the trust and, and that is that of trustee, which is the government's position. So they've tricked everybody into thinking they're the trustee when actually the government is the trustee, but we've never established our role as the administrator of our own trust. So one simple remedy is to actually write to whoever the head of the legal division in your country is. In Australia here, it's the Governor-General. In Canada, it's the Governor-General. I'm not sure who it would be in England or Ireland. It would be whoever is the head of the, um, you know, the, the federal prosecutor or whoever that would be. And you write to them and you say, well, look, 
I've got this birth certificate here, and it's my understanding that I'm the beneficiary in this arrangement, and therefore the sole shareholder of this All Capitals legal name. I believe that as the sole shareholder, it's my right to appoint whichever administrator I like, and so I'm appointing myself, this, this lowercase name, as the administrator of this, this trust agreement. And seeing as how it is a three-party agreement, and so it's obviously a trust agreement, that really only leaves one position left, and that is the position of trustee. And I believe that that's who you guys are. And so this is what I'm seeing in this birth certificate arrangement. So I can find no evidence to suggest that it's anything other than this. So if I'm wrong with what I've just laid out to you, can you please contact me and let me know? And you have 21 days. If you fail to contact me and let me know, then I will take that as confirmation that what I've outlined to you is in fact correct and a default judgment, a certificate of default will be issued to your office. And you wait for 21 days and they won't answer you because they can't because that is what's going on and they don't want to let you know and they can't really admit it. But if they fail to answer you, well, they've agreed that that's what's going on. So then you issue a certificate of default. You get it all sent by registered mail. So you've got these two documents that basically show that the government has agreed with you that you're the administrator of your own trust, your own legal name. And if you ever receive any fines, uh, you know, like regarding statute law and all this sort of stuff where there's no actually injured party, well, you can basically lodge these two documents with the court and say, well, look, the government has agreed that I'm the administrator of my own trust, and so I'm the administrator of this, this court case that's being held for this legal name, and I'm putting forth a motion to dismiss the case. And they really don't have any, anything to go on from there. They, they don't have any, any leg to stand on. But again, you've got to know who and what you are, and you've got to be prepared to exercise this power. See, what this is called is equity. You, know, you own all the equity in that name, but equity aids the vigilant, not those who sleep on their rights. And what we're dealing with here is a corporate system. It's all contract law, and they're performing, you know, entrapping you into contract law by not informing you that what's happening in court is actually trust law, and and you're never you're never claiming your administration rights. So that that's one simple way to go about it. I hope that made sense. Oh, it made sense for me. Yes, that's beautiful. And so equity is that the same as liability? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, if 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 you're the sole shareholder then you own all the equity. You put everything in to that corporate name. You, I mean, you own everything that is, is Santos Bonacci or Santo Bonacci. There's nobody yes. else that can claim any part of you. It's you. So you put everything in. You own all the equity in that name. Equity is king. Equity is everything. If, if you're yeah. the sole shareholder of a, of a corporation, you own all the interest and all the liability for that corporation. You put everything in. You're the one who reaps all the benefit, and if something goes wrong, you're the one who reaps all the disaster. You own all the equity. It's all up to you. You have full liability for that corporation. And if you're the sole shareholder, then, you, of course, you're going to appoint yourself as the director or administrator of that corporation. And if you've got employees, then the employees are going to have to take instructions from the administrator in order to carry out action for the beneficiary. And since you are the beneficiary and the administrator, well... You know, no one can remove you as administrator because you're the sole shareholder. You have all say over who appoints the administrator. It's the same as any corporate entity, same as any corporation. Because your all capitals legal person is actually a corporate entity. It's a corporate name. No one actually owns it. You don't own the name. The government doesn't own the name. The name was created by the trust agreement that is your birth certificate. They created this legal entity. And there's a, there's a trust agreement going on there with you and the government. And when you're born, they create this birth certificate. They give your parents hand it to the government, and they basically put your share of the Commonwealth into the hands of the government in trust. And what the government doesn't tell you is that they then register it with this this big Vatican trust, and they basically use it to milk you of all your wealth. And that happens simply because we never really come into adulthood. We never actually claim administration rights over our own trust. And we're able to do this by just simply querying them. We don't have to claim that this is who we are. We can't say, okay, it's a fact that I'm the sole shareholder. So it's a fact that I'm appointing myself administrator. And it's a fact that you're the trustee. Because it's not a fact. It's, a, it's an assumption. It's a presumption. If you claim a fact, then the onus is on you to prove it. 
But since their whole legal system works in presumptions, what you do is you, you write to them, you say, well, I'm presuming that it works like this and that I'm the beneficiary and I have the right to appoint myself administrator and that you're the trustee. If I'm mistaken, please correct me because I've looked and I can find no documents or evidence to prove otherwise and I don't believe any exists. So if I'm wrong, please clarify for me. And if you don't clarify, because I know you're a busy person, then I will take it as acquiescence that you agree to what I've just written here. And a certificate of default will be issued to your office. And you send it to them in registered mail, so you've got a record of it. And you get a receipt that they received the letter. You give them 21 days or something to reply. And then they don't reply, you send them a certificate of default, and with that certificate of default, you could also send them, if you wanted, something like a body corpus or a corporation soul, which would say, this is what my purpose in reality is because I have established my pre preeminent trust with the Creator because I know who and what I am. I know that I'm a divine expression of the Creator or whatever you perceive yourself to be. This is why spirituality comes very much into it. You've got to know who you are. And you can outline this to the government and say, well, so if you're attempting to enforce any statutes on me that interfere with my ability to be this as, as I'm instructed to be by my creator, then, then you know, you're in breach of trust. And if you presume yourself to be a higher authority and, and presume to come between myself and the creator, knowing that all men are created equal and that all the laws you've created, you've created because you've claimed your divine trust and your divine connection to the Creator, you can't allow me to not claim mine. And if you are presuming to come between me and the Creator, you need to provide me with proof of claim that you're a higher authority than God because we're not even dealing with a legal matter anymore. When it gets to that point, we're dealing with a spiritual matter. You, you see, so it's all got to tie into the spiritual aspect. There is no easy fix where you can just go and fill in a form and say, I'm going to send this to the government and they're not going to bother me anymore. Not until you understand who and what you are and stand in that power. Know what equity is and stand in your equity. It, it's, it's a very, very spiritual thing. But that, that's the way it has to be approached. Yeah, it's, it's Max, it's a bit like, see, I, I in the last hour, I've, I've emphasized, and the, and the hour before, actually, I've em emphasized how reclaiming dominion and standing up competently is 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 a holistic thing where we understand our spiritual nature that we are that we are divine and and that is the big picture if we don't have that part sorted out it's no use sort of running into court with sovereignty this and sovereignty that and because we're, we're just using um uh, you know like uh, we're just using techniques that we're hoping to uh that will work but 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 we we don't have that 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 stance of spiritual knowing who we are. We don't stand in competence um, as a as a spiritual person, knowing fully knowing what we really really are. Very exactly. Yeah. Exactly. See, a lot of people go to these court cases. They, they they're doing this because they're scared. They don't want to pay fines. They're, they're scared of going to jail. They're scared of the judge. They're doing it all out of fear. And other people go in there and they, they go, okay, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to tell this judge that he's got no jurisdiction over me. I'm going to go and I'm going to fight him and I'm going to belittle them and I'm going to, I'm going to walk out of there feeling superior. So then they're, they're not in the right energetic state to begin with. And if you can work it out, you can deal with the whole thing administratively and never even have to go to their courtroom. Not, not, you know, if you're going to magistrate's court for some breach of some statute. Because there's no injured party in a statute, so you're not even going to a real court. You're not going to civil court or anything. You're basically going to a private court, and they're getting you to go in there and justify that their rules apply to you by getting you to plead guilty or not guilty. Well, what, what am I? What am I supposed to be pleading to? What is this a valid law? Who, who am I even dealing with? Who are you people? You could be a candy company that says that I've, I've eaten the wrong colour candy for the week. Who are you? Are you representing the, the Queen of England? Uh, you know, this, this crown that you that sent me this notice, this summons to go to court issued by the crown. Which crown are you? Let's establish that as, as, as well. You know, right to the crown. See, they give you 21 days. If the police come and arrest you and, and take you to the police station and charge you with the breach of one of their statutes, then they let you go and they send you a summons to go to court 21 days later. It's usually 21 days or longer. 
So they give you time to actually seek remedy, but nobody does it. So what you do is in that 21 days, as soon as you get your summons to go to court, you, you write to the Crown and you say, excuse me, I just need to clarify, which Crown are you? Do you represent uh, Queen Elizabeth from the House of Windsor or do you represent uh, Her Majesty in Right of England, which I believe to be the Crown Corporation of London? And judging by the statutes that you're attempting to enforce upon me, I'm guessing that I'm right. And you're this other crown that isn't Queen Elizabeth. So seeing as how you're a corporation, if you want me to go to your court and face some of your, your statute laws, you need to show me the contract that I have with your corporation. Because if you're attempting to enforce a contract upon me that doesn't actually exist, then I'm going to approach the other queen, the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth of the House of Windsor, and I'm going to inform her that there has been a breach of my human rights, and she she will act upon that because that is her duty to do so because she is sworn by the coronation oath to uphold the common law and preserve the common law rights of the people. But she has to be petitioned to do so. If we don't, if we don't say, "Hey, these guys are trampling on our rights," and and approach uh, the Queen's secretary and get him to deal with the problem, then they're not going to deal with the problem. You know, if if your children are playing up and you don't know it or you're not even looking and they don't come and tell you about it, you're not going to know and deal with the problem. So, you know, equity, <laughs> one of the rules of equity, one of the maxims of equity is that equity honours the vigilant. Equity favours the vigilant, not those who sleep on their rights. So rights only work if you choose to exercise them. You have common law rights. The Queen is in place as the defender of those rights but you have to petition her to do so, or at least ask her to do so, or at least make her aware that a problem is occurring. I mean, not to say that she isn't probably one of the main shareholders of the other Crown Corporation anyway, but see, this is how they get away with it. This is just how they get away with it. So you've got to know who and what you are, and you've got to be prepared to stand in that and know that you're free. You absolutely do. You can't go there to fight the system. For me, the system doesn't exist. It's it's fiction. Everything below the word man is fiction. It's all fiction. And and yeah. once you realize that and you know that and, and you operate within the, the, the guidelines of God's law, whatever you perceive that to be, and I, I sum that up as do no harm, and I know other people that do that as well, um, I really, really recommend that people look at Dean Clifford's videos on trust law. I've got a website called thecrowhouse.com, and if you go there, you'll find a banner that says lessons in trust law that will take you to uh, a whole bunch of workshops of Dean's. And that's that's a really good way of getting your head around it. But it's so important for people to establish their preeminent trust with the Creator and to stand in their power and don't wish to fight the system. Don't go there in fear of the system. Don't Don't be coy with these people. Just deal with it administratively before you even have to go to court just send off these documents, ask them to establish what their actual standing is and tell them you believe you can appoint yourself administrator, you'd like to know which crown you're dealing with, all of this sort of stuff. And then once you get the, the default judgments, because you give them 21 days to, well, you've got 21 days to go to court, so you could send it to them and you could say, well, I'll give you 10 days to reply. That's pretty normal, three days mailing time, uh, three days to examine it, uh, three days to get back to you and a day's grace. That, that's pretty standard. So you send them that. They don't answer. You issue a default judgment. They don't answer that. You take that, that document and your default judgment and the receipts to show that you sent a registered mail. They received the documents. You've got total agreement of the parties. You go and file it with the court. There need be no case because we have agreement of the parties that there is no jurisdiction. Motion to dismiss and file that with the court. And, and that's, that will uh, override most statutes. Mm, that's brilliant. So in a, in a typical scenario in court, um, you approach the, uh, the bench when you're asked to come up, you know, you've been fined, uh, I don't know, speeding or something or whatever, and you will say, you will establish with the judge, um, I'm, uh, I'm appointing myself the, uh, the um, administrator of the... Uh, the trust, or could you say, um, <clears throat> Franco Collins had an interesting suggestion. I just wonder whether 
uh, that would be okay to say. He says that um, I am the occupant of the office of the general executor of the estate. Is that well? Is yeah, that I mean, you, you could say that. You could say that. It's kind of getting complicated. The less words you use, the better, because words mm. are open to interpretation. It's mm. like uh, <clears throat> even when you say the statement "I am," you know, "I am." Mm. Therefore, I exist because I am. You know, I am. If if I'm not, then how am I talking to you? You know, I I am. Even when you say I am man, now it's open to interpretation. Okay, well, what's a man? Are you referring to man as in Black's Law Dictionary definition of man? Human being? What's a human being then? A human being is defined in some books as a monster. So what are you? You've claimed to be a man. Can you prove that you're a man? You know, you've created, it's open to interpretation simply by adding one more word. Whereas I am, you know, either you are or you aren't, you know what I'm saying? So mm. you start, the more words you add to a sentence, you start making it open to interpretation. What dictionary are they using for their words? What dictionary are you using for your words? That's a good thing to specify in these documents as well. You know, every, every word in this document, the meaning of it can be found in Oxford English Dictionary or in Black's Law Dictionary, or whatever one you're going to use. But establish what that is if you're going to deal with these people. And say things in the simplest of terms. Absolutely the simplest of terms. Now, if you go to court, as soon as they call your name, you'd, you'd say, well, I'm here regarding that matter. They don't even say your name. I'm here regarding that matter. Um, who, who are you? Uh, well, I'm, I'm the person who was arrested. Uh, well, state your name. You say, well... Uh, rather than state my name, it's not really important. It's more, it's more important to establish the, the position that I'm in, the, the role that I'm playing. And I'm, I'm here as the administrator of that account. Are you a public servant? And I'll probably call the sheriffs about that point. So it kind of gets into a bit of a shouting match, but you've got to establish yourself as the administrator as, as soon as possible so that otherwise they will presume they are the administrator. So that's why it's best to preemptively deal with it by sending in the paperwork, establishing that before you go to court in those 21 days grace that they give you to do this. That way you don't okay. go in. See, even, even if you go into their court, you, you, you're in, in this place. You're in this, this whole corporate system just by being there. And if you're saying the judge has no jurisdiction over you and you don't even really need to go to the court because you've established what your position in the trust is, then what are you even doing in their court? Unless they've dragged you in there. But, you know, if you've gone there of your own accord under a summons because you want to put the judge in their place for for uh, attempting to take away your human rights, then is, is that really honourable? Why do you need to go there if it's, if it's a fictional court based on a corporate system and you've established what your standing is? Why do you even need to go to their court unless they drag you there? You know what I mean? Mm. So now let's clear this up then. So it's it's their trust, right? They created the trust. Well, the trust was created by your parents and the government. They signed a a document with the government, they, a, a certificate of live birth, which entered into a trust agreement with the government, where your parents were the grantors. They created this trust with the government, where they placed your share of the Commonwealth into the hands of the government with you as the beneficiary. Mm. But, and once you've reached the age of majority, which is, I think, 14, um, you, uh, you can claim that, but you never do. See, that's the thing, because we don't know it exists that way. We don't know it's actually a trust agreement. So we never stand up and claim our right to administer our own affairs. So they administer them for us. And what they do is they appoint themselves as administrator because we never claim that because they have control of the trust because it was registered with the uh, attorney regis trust, which of course gives power of attorney to to the registered. You know what I mean? Gives mm -hmm. power of attorney to, to the crown. So they're governing the affairs now. So they're acting as administrator and putting you in as the trustee, and and the crown as the beneficiary, and the crown corporation, of course. So that's how it's working. So they're just basically using you to milk everything that you have and, and milk every, every resource out of the planet and transfer it into the hands of the Crown Corporation. See, that's what's happening because we never claim our, our right as the sole shareholder. See, that's the payroll, the fact that you own all the equity 
the fact that you're the sole shareholder in that name. They are simply part of the arrangement. And once you've reached the age of majority, you, you can say, well, you, thank you very much for looking after my life up to this point. But now seeing as how I'm the only shareholder, I'm appointing a new administrator. Mm. And that's putting you back in your rightful position as a public trustee because that's what you are. You are public servants, you people. And that, that's the way you have to approach it. So, but see, just, we, we never claim that because we don't know it exists. So we never claim that right to do so. But as a sole shareholder, of course you can. I mean, in a corporation, who appoints the CEO? It's the shareholders. And if the CEO is doing a bad job and the company's going down the, down the tube, they, they vote him out and they elect a new one. Well, we're the shareholder of ourselves. We're the sole shareholder of ourselves. We own all the equity. We just have to take responsibility for the liability. And, and, and stand in our power and, and administrate ourselves. So, so in that analogy, then, the, um, the, the justice or the judge or the magistrate is the CEO, and we can say, well, look, um, um, we're the shareholders and we don't like the job you're doing, so we're voting you out. I'm going to appoint you... Uh, I'm going to appoint myself the, um, the administrator and um, I well, ask you to well, handle the accounting and dismiss the case. Well, even if you do that, you're, you're, um, you're claiming fact again. You do it on presumption. Mm-hmm. You, know, you do it on presumption. I've come here on the understanding that as the sole shareholder, I can point myself the, the administrator. So I've come here as the administrator and look at the judge and say, are you a public servant? Because if you are, then you're a public trustee. I mean, I've come here under that presumption. Have you Why? Ever asked- you guys- are you guys saying something different? If you're if you're claiming that you have administration rights over this all all capitals legal uh, person, please please tell me under whose authority you're claiming that. And back it up. I mean, show me show me proof of claim because I'm I'm the sole shareholder here, and only shareholders can appoint administrators. So I, I, I've come here under the assumption that that you're the trustee, and mm, and they mm. they have they have to then prove you wrong. Because it's all about presumption, isn't it? You it know, is, when you're in it court, is. it's all about presumption. So you, you, you're just presuming that this is what's happening. You know, and, I've, and I actually, you know, I've actually lodged documents and, and, and told, said I didn't want to come down here, but you guys insisted. And so now I've come down here as a director and CEO of this legal person in order to have a chat in front of the trustee to inform you that I don't appreciate you messing with my company because I'm the one who calls board meetings for my legal person, not you guys. I have no contract with your corporation. <laughs> Beautiful. And um, I wonder, do you know anyone or have you yourself uh, asked that question in a court? Um, are you a public servant to the judge? I haven't myself. I haven't been to court for a while. I just don't seem to mm. attract that energy. But um, mm. I mean, like I said, it's not about me going to court. I, I don't really um, want, to, want to battle anyone. I just want to um, have humanity know that they're free i've been trying to tell them on i've done so many shows trying to explain how reality works to people and just let people know that they are free and what i find exciting about trust law is i can say well look now if you view your birth certificate from the right you know, perspective and look at the ar- arrangement you're actually in with the government i can prove that you're free you know do you feel free yet you know because uh, I, I think it's it's really important that humanity realizes that they are free, and that we start putting these governments back into their rightful place as public trustees, and realize what a, what a terrible job they're doing as trustees. Because all of these wars and the fracking and all the stuff that's going on on the planet at the moment is because oh. the trustees are out of control. Because we, the shareholders, are not appointing the correct directors of our trust, and that's what it all comes down to. It's pretty simple when you see it like that, isn't it? It's just so It simple. is. It's, it's, it's absolutely yeah. simple. See, that's the thing. People make it very, very complicated, but really the truth is so simple. It's so ridiculously simple that most people simply can't see the forest for the trees. They think there must be revolutions to be waged or all this endless paperwork to fill out and all these, these things and steps they have to do and all these, these little tricks that they do to try to collapse these trusts and all this sort of stuff. All we have to do is claim our right to administer our own trust that already exists. 
with these people. Simply step into the role that you were born to be and, and, and start making these trustees act the way the administrators tell them to act. Now, what if the judge says, um, OK, well, no, this is our trust. This is the government uh, uh, owns it completely and uh, you can't do that. Is, is there any chance that they will do that? They may try that, but um, you, you so say, well, by, by, by whose authority? Show me by whose authority. What, where is the contract that shows that I, gave, that I, as the sole shareholder, gave you permission to do that? Produce a contract where there was certainty of terms, where there was full disclosure, and there was valuable consideration. You need those three things to even have a valid contract. So show me the contract where I agreed that you could administer this. Because what I'm seeing here on my birth certificate is me as the sole shareholder. And I'm seeing that my parents were the grantor, of course. So when I became 14 years old, I became the sole shareholder and grantor. And, and so I, I believe I can appoint myself the administrator. You guys actually signed off on the deal. Your signature is on this document. Not my signature, not my parents' signature, but your signature, the signature of the Registrar of Births, Deaths and Marriages. That, 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 that shows obligation. Any document that I've signed means that I'm obligated to perform a certain task, means that I'm appointing myself trustee, or I've been appointed, or I've agreed to be trustee because I signed off on the deal. You know, I, I, you, you sold me a car, I told you that I'd pay you $100 a week, I signed the deal, now I'm in trust to pay that. I'm required to pay that. I have an obligation to fulfill. You, the government, signed this document, which clearly shows me as the sole shareholder of this all capitals legal person. Correct me if I'm wrong. You have the obligation, not me. You signed the deal. So that's, that's your thing. That's the ticket. What can they say to that? What can they say? How can the judge possibly claim that he has jurisdiction over you? If you, if you have not done wrong, if you have only um, broken a statute, which, which there's, there's no injured party in a statute. It, it's, it's not God's law, it's, it's man's law, you know. You, you have, you're under your, your, your common law, law right to be free. So all you're doing is that this, this corporation, the Crown Corporation of London, is claiming that you broke one of their rules. So it's claiming, therefore, that you have a contract with it and that you are performing a duty for them when the complaint was made against you. And, you know, people will argue, so, well, you've got a driver's license, and you're driving on a road, and you've got a registered car. This makes you, you know, the government owns your car because it's registered, and they own you because you've got a license. Well, okay, well, I would say that I've got the car registered in case I would like to work for the government. I've got a license in case I'd like to work for the government. They're there with me in case I ever want to use them, but I'm not using it at the moment. And if you're claiming I was performing a function for your corporation when I was driving my car on the road, then again, show me the contract. Show me the pay slip. Show me the payroll slip. Tell me what function I was required to perform. Tell me how I agreed to anything. Show me how there was full disclosure. Show me the contract that I have with your corporation. Because I believe you are this crown corporation that's masquerading as the Queen of England. But uh, if you know, you're not. You have to show me. You know, you have to put the onus on them to show you and ask them: Are you this corporation? Who are you representing? Do you represent Elizabeth from the House of Windsor, or do you represent the Crown Corporation of London? Because you know, it's all in, it's all contract law. The whole lot's contract law. So you you just got to know how to approach it. Yeah, that's that's great. Um, well, see, I with my uh, presentation on on law and the history there. I did have a second part. Serena was um, uh, was on, and she had some remedies that were based on Frank O'Connor's uh, information there at Eucadia and OneHeaven.org. And um, as it happened, um, the process for collapsing the trusts uh, changed. Now, uh, many many sorry. Yeah, good. Okay. Um, so we've got uh, another 15 minutes then before the hour. Uh, so I'd like to just uh, close then, uh, Max, by uh, saying that um, 
I'm going to be uh, pointing people to your um, crow house. It was the crowhouse.com. Yeah, the crowhouse.com. The crowhouse.com for this uh, simple remedy because um, uh, I'm still pointing people to Frank O'Collins, of course, but it seems to me like a very, very complicated uh, system with um, <clears throat> what Frank's doing. Hopefully, he'll uh, simplify it. But this is uh, quite good, and I've. And I have had many inquiries. People have been emailing me saying, where's uh, Serena's second part to the remedies and how to collapse a trust and everything like that. And I've already started pointing them there. And I've said, look, there will be a letter that you can use um, to send in to the district, uh, to the um, Attorney General. And that will be available on the crowhouse.com uh, within a couple of weeks or so. So... I'm pointing them there. Um, yeah, well, look, okay. what I'm, I'm, yeah, well, absolutely. Well, what I'm going to do is I'll, I'm going to create a letter that is, is essentially more guidelines because, like I said, it's not about filling in the blanks. It's, it's about competency. You, you've really got to understand how this works. And, and I, I can't just give people a letter where they fill in the blanks and send it in and, and thrust them into this world that they have no understanding of. They've really got to get an understanding of how it works. I really, really recommend that people go and watch the the uh, trust law workshops that are posted on the Crow House by Dean Clifford. They're very, very informative, and they give you a very, very simple understanding of how this works. So that's something that people really do need to do, and um, th that's the way it's got to be approached. I mean, you've, you've you've got to get an understanding of it. You really do. So I'm quite happy to to write up a guideline form but i'm not going to do something where people will just fill in the blanks because i think it would be irresponsible of me to do so people will, will just go and get themselves in trouble if they don't really know how to stand in this you, you've really got to stand in it and know who and what you are and you've got to know that you are free because you are we, we are all you know totally free and we can really really easily deal with this problem by simply knowing that and, and standing in our power and and holding these trustees accountable for their actions and I, like i said i don't want to jail them i don't want to hurt them in any way i just want to dismiss them from their role because they're not doing a very good job but the reason they're getting away with it is because we have never claimed our, our right to administer our own trusts and that's what we need to do more than anything yeah let's change that and look, with, with what Franco Collins and stuff are doing, I mean, this has been an ongoing process with everybody. There's been so many people that have gone down so many different rabbit holes, and I've done so myself. And, and we, we find these remedies and we find uh, these really complicated ways of doing things, but the, the easiest way is always the best, and the simplest way is very often the best way. And when you really look at it and you see that this is simply a, a, a three-part agreement, it's simply a private trust, and all of the trusts that they've got us involved in, they're talking about collapsing these trusts. You can collapse these trusts immediately by simply establishing which crown you are dealing with, because obviously there wasn't full disclosure, and establishing yourself as the administrator of your All Capitals Legal Fiction name that already exists. And that will automatically restore your rights and collapse all the other trusts because none of these contracts are valid because there wasn't full disclosure, there wasn't consent, there wasn't valuable consideration. So what I'm essentially saying is if you're not part of their system and you know you're not part of their system, you know who and what you are, then you don't have to play by their rules and go down all these complicated avenues and collapse all of these fictional trusts because everything below man is fiction, and that's the bottom line. Yeah, well said. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, very good. Thanks, Max. Uh, appreciate you explaining all this, and um, I hope that um, everyone's benefited from that and um, they can... Go to your website and um, and study up on it. And I do recommend Dean Clifford. I was watching him today, and he's very good. Um, he's got some. This is the remedy that he's uh, sharing with people, and he's doing uh, wonderful things. He's got a beautiful uh, manner about him, and he's very clear. 
uh, very concise and he explains things so well. He's got a just a whiteboard and a and some markers, pretty much how I do my presentations, quite simple, uh, not too complicated. And um, it looks like uh, he's on to something there, so um, we can look forward to that. It certainly makes me rejoice because I don't like complicated things and um, I've had uh, a bit of a struggle with uh, the process that was uh, suggested by Frank Collins, so uh, I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, well, it's, it's very simple, really. I mean, it's always hidden in plain sight. It, it really is. And it's, it's very empowering to, um, to find it. It really is. But I mean, all credit to Frank's work as well. I mean, it, it's been an ongoing process for all of us to, to get to this, this high harmonic. But that's, that's basically where we're going. And it's all part of the awakening process. So everybody's, everybody's work's been valid and it's all added to the final, final understanding, really. Well, this is it, and Frank O'Collins has got help from many, many people, and uh, he's uh, forever uh, accepting the help, and which is good because he's he can't do it all on his own. But um, he has a wealth of information. He has gone deep into the history, and uh, and uh, I've learned most of what I'm doing uh, through him. So I always point people to to his uh, information because. It is so deep and so profound. He's discovered and uh, a lot of this dark history. And before I uh, stumbled across Frank o uh, Frank o Collins, I was um, I was doing the um, the uh, well. I was into all the other guys like Rob, your Rob Menards and your Tim Turner and and stuff like that, which are great. You know, they're great. Uh, but um, when you understand trust law, it seems that it has edge over the um, the um it does i mean a lot of these people they're still operating in law and they're still operating sort of in corporate law and they're working around loopholes and things and and you know it's, you know the difference between statutes and acts and all this sort of stuff but they're really not looking at it from a perspective of trust law and you'll never, ever be free until you can look at it from that perspective. But but most of all, like I said at the beginning, you've, you've got to establish your preeminent trust with whatever you perceive the creator to be. You've, you've really got to know who and what you are and, and, and stand in that and know that nobody is any better than you. We are all equal in the eyes of God. And that's where you have to be. And don't fear these people. Don't fear the suits. Don't fear any of this stuff. And, and don't even go to court if you can help it. I mean, courts are even designed in such a way as, as to put you in fear and to, to help you lose your, your power and your energy as soon as you walk in there. It is geometrically designed to do this. And the whole energy of the place, it's designed to take your power away from you. So even once you well, know this stuff, it's... A, but even once you notice stuff, it's very difficult to go in there and stand in it. So rather than go through all that discomfort, deal with it administratively because you have the power to do so. You've just got to do it. You've just got to seek this remedy. And your argument isn't with the court anyway. Your argument is with the one who brought the claim against you, and that's the Crown. So you need to, you need to direct your, your correspondence to the Crown and establish what authority they actually have over you. And once they don't, uh, respond to your affidavits and you've got record of it all, then they've agreed by default because it's all about presumption and, and, and claims that are made that aren't rebutted then stand as facts. And so that, that's it. You've got everything that you need to dismiss the case. Too good. Thank you very much, Max. I uh, appreciate you coming on and helping us that. Well, you've, uh, you've been busy presenting tonight and so you've just uh, come home from that and uh, here you are sharing this with us so uh, I'd like to thank you very very much and um, we uh, we need to uh, keep in touch with this and uh, work work forward, go forward thank you so kindly and my I'm pleasure, gonna, thank, um, thanks for asking me yeah. on Sam no worries and now I'll um, drop you off then uh, <laughs> from Skype if I know how to do that or you can just uh, Oh, thank you. Jack's going to do that, and then I'll just spend the next five minutes uh, winding up. How's that? See you then, Max. Okay, guys. Bye-bye.